Hey YouTubers and welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super discussion video, the very first video on this channel for 2018. I hope everyone is having a fantastic year. I'm going to ask my guest, I'm going to introduce him actually in the next couple seconds, but before I do that, I want everyone, like I said in yesterday's video, please go down to the comment section below as you're listening to us talk about this and share with us your New Year's resolutions, what you want from this year, whether you're excited for it, uh, what are you really hoping to accomplish, all of that stuff. Uh, and also also, before I stay, say anything else, I want to say that this idea is going to spark the next couple of videos on my channel, the next, I guess, week or so. I'm not exactly sure how many topics we're going to come up with at this point, but I got this from a thing that's been going around here on comicbooks.com. They've written an article based off of a Reddit uh, post that I haven't actually seen the original post, so if we do end up copying some of that stuff, it's not intentional. Uh, you know, theories or speculations in that sense. I'm going to leave a link to the the comicbooks.com article in the, in the description section below, so please make sure to go check that out. And if you guys know where the original link is, you can share it with me and I'll put it in the description section uh, as well. But with that being said, I am joined by KJ over at Rocky Ride Network. Man, how are you? How's your 2018 going? What do you want to accomplish this year? And just tell everyone very quickly, uh, say hello. What is going on, everyone? Um, 2018, I'm looking to for it to be a very good year. I'm being very optimistic. Last year had its ups and downs, but I'm just hoping that together as a community, we can just keep bringing each other up, and let's just have a more unified year than 2017 was, and let's just keep progressing for every day to be better than the last one. Exactly, exactly. I hope everyone heard that, man. <laughs> but with that being said, <laughs> with that being said, man, we're going to be talking about Starting off the week, you guys saw the title, saw the thumbnail, you probably know where we're going with this, but starting off this week of how will 2018 reshape Dragon Ball Super, and the very first topic we have here is, should Dragon Ball Super kind of write off Goku for an arc or two or something kind of similar to what they did with the end of the Cell games versus the first couple episodes of the Boo arc with the whole Great Saiyan stuff and everything like that, you know, kind of give other characters a chance to shine. Vegeta, Gohan, Goten, Trunks, 18, 17, Roshi, you know, Piccolo, all these other people, especially all the other universes. I mean, we're at a real turning point for Dragon Ball Super at this, at this junction because 2018 is going to see the end of the tournament of power. We don't know, at least at the time recording this, what the next arc is even going to be about. We don't know if any major shakeups are actually going to come about this tournament and how Universe 7 is going to be reacting, who's actually going to be left, and for what reasons. We don't know who's going to get the wish. We don't know anything. And it's possible we don't know that because there is some major shakeups, some major changes coming down the pipeline, and this could be one of them. And look, like I said, I haven't read the original Reddit article. He could have mentioned this and a reason why Goku might have been written off or might be written off sometime in the, in the near future of Dragon Ball Super. But I think that this is definitely worth mentioning. We do know, and they have mentioned several times in the Tournament of Power, that you have a disqualification. You cannot kill anyone in the tournament if you do you're immediately disqualified and we've seen only once but maybe for a strategic purpose what it means to be legitimately disqualified or taken out of the tournament of power if you break the rules we saw it with frost they completely erased him right it's not just like oh you're out you have to sit out i'm just assuming they showed us that if if at all because someone if they end up doing the one thing you cannot do in this tournament will get erased immediately from the Zenos, you know, without remorse, without any thought or process or anything. So what if they did that just simply to erase Goku? Like, what happens if that happens? How does the series progress? Who takes over? Who who takes the mantle for the next arc? And how does that shake up the entire universe, at least for an arc or two? You know, you're not going to get rid of Goku forever. They're going to figure out a way to bring him back and in a better, better and bigger way. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Would you be receptive to it? Do you think that that would hurt the community, hurt the show, uh, hurt anything like that? Um... <laughs> I have a few different sides on this one. Um, I've seen a lot of people say, for one, and I agree to a certain extent, that Dragon Ball sort of isn't Dragon Ball without Goku as its main character. And that's that's always been a prevalent thing. There's always been like a very strong shift whenever even an episode or two doesn't fully revolve around Goku. I mean, the hype that occurred for episode 71 
was crazy and people were legitimately thinking oh crap so hit's gonna kill goku and is he gonna be gone for an entire arc people were legit excited and and yet people were still kind of disappointed when he came back in the next episode as easily as he did um and yet i know that on my end i was hoping it would have more lasting consequences but i was act but i was still actually really happy because again the story feels weird without goku there are several different factors in dragon ball that sort of are completed by goku's character being present you have one of the sources of vegeta's motivation being goku you have one of gohan's motivations being goku how the sun family is able to hold up without goku how bulma's family is able to hold up without goku it's every single factor in in a scenario like taking goku out of the story would revolve around the main characters not knowing what to do without their main protagonist around because there haven't been many instances of that kind of thing happening. In Dragon Ball Super alone, we've had, again, episode 71, 72 involving Hit. And in those spare moments that we had where it felt like Goku was actually going to die, we see Piccolo, Gohan, and Goten surrounding the body, dang near at tears. Go Goten was actually crying, I believe. And it was just a really, it, at least to me, it was it was a really emotional scene because you really you get that feeling of death actually like meaning something that you didn't really see much up until that point and by the end of it we still didn't see it but but for that split second we we thought that we were going to get that um but even then goku's big return even though it was literally spoiled in the episode preview it was still a very very awesome battle that followed there um and then we have episode 110 with Goku's return and people thinking that he actually got killed via the spirit bomb and then he comes back in this new explosive ultra instinct form and it's sort of like what I kind of want to call almost like a narrative Zenkai in a way because it seems like every time they want to kill off Goku he comes back and strengthens the plot in an even bigger way than he did before and I think I think it's really difficult to really say whether or not it would help or hurt, but I do see a lot of benefits to it, and especially just just the idea of how these other characters are able to manage and move forward without their main protagonist around. I'm always intrigued by things like that in their storylines. I, I agree, and if you look back into the whole Dragon Ball Z days, you get to see brief instances where Goku is actually written off the story. I mean, not entirely really because when he first kind of bites the dust in the original Dragon Ball Z days the very first time with Raditz he's still a main part of the story he's just away and not really interacting with any of the main characters that we had known up until that point but we get a lot of growth from people we get Piccolo kind of changing his tune Gohan becoming more of a warrior you have Krillin and everyone else training for the Saiyans arrivals and we get the introduction of Vegeta there's a lot of growth happening there character wise without our main protagonist or antagonist or protagonist without our main protagonist at the center helm of everyone else around him he's not the center focus of their world more so just the story and then you also have after the cell games he's gone we get a huge time skip but when we come back we get to see all these characters who for the most part have moved on with their lives i mean gohan is way more focused on his studies than we've ever seen him throughout the entirety of dragon ball z he gets to be his little super superhero uh fantasy world thing where he dresses up like this weird guy who does poses and everything it's a really comedic interesting thing which i think was definitely needed after the cell games very dark uh vegeta's kind of moved on as well training pushing himself higher harder and harder without the motivation of goku and by the time goku comes back i mean obviously that rivalry with goku goku's power obviously uses uh pushes vegeta to the next level and makes him do terrible disastrous things that he probably wouldn't have done otherwise which is great for his character and shows their rivalry but vegeta moved on without goku as well and Vegeta even moved on at the end of Z without Goku, at least from what we originally saw, uh, without the need to keep going after Goku. You know, he kind of gives it up after the fight with Kid Buu. So, yeah, I mean, like, I, I think that characters can progress without him. We've just never seen them go up against anyone, unless you're counting Vegeta and Nappa, without Goku there to save the day. And I think that that would be kind of an interesting thing to see. 
and you know you have all these characters who have depth who have been i can i guess with most of the community would agree like a little bit mishandled for what it is you know goten and trunks they haven't really had any real do throughout this entire series gohan's finally getting some shine piccolo just keeps getting put aside every single arc that he's in i mean he makes almost no difference unless it's just kind of a filler episode really for dragon ball super so yeah i i really would like to see this i think it would be really cool if they did just for an arc you know have vegeta and gohan and everything make it feel like dragon ball super's done this with the term of power make it feel like a dragon ball z movie where like and i know a lot of people don't like second coming with the whole broly stuff but that didn't have Goku. I mean, yeah, at the very end it had Goku, but it didn't really have Goku. Bio Broly didn't have Goku. I think that's one of the most special things about those movies is that the characters have to deal with it themselves. They don't have Goku to lean on throughout those entire uh, scenarios. I would really like to see that. It doesn't have to be a long arc. It could be five, six episodes at max. Create a character like a like a Dragon Ball Z movie villain. Have Goku, Gohan, Vegeta, you know, do like a, a a BoJack movie, and I think a lot of people would really resonate with that. I think it would actually go down in 2018 as one of the better arcs in Dragon Ball Super, even if it's just this mini arc as we wait for the next big arc to come around. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. It would. It would have a lasting effect in terms of what people think about the series because one thing that people do say a lot, and I perfectly understand why they say it, is that it feels like the show doesn't really have any weight. Like, nothing that really happens affects the main cast at all. And even though we know that by the end of the 42 volumes they're going to be completely fine, what, what would be amazing is to still have that bit of an arc where we, we do have them in a... But I, I would want it to be in a legitimately dire situation, like in a, not just in a case of like, you know, maybe Goku is out training somewhere and then a whole bunch of space poachers show up or something and they all, like, that's not, that wouldn't be, that wouldn't suffice, I think, like, it would, I would just love if it's like, even if nothing's going on really, if it's, if it's just like one of those not really action-filled arcs, and it's just a lot of character interactions, a lot of character building, that kind of thing, where we have Goku not being there. I think both could e could be equally as powerful, because like just seeing them trying to adjust to their daily lives without Goku, in a way. And I also think, in a way, you know, a lot of people are really annoyed by Goku's character in Super, which again I understand that sentiment a lot. Um, and I think this could also serve as a thing for the fan base too. Because I know for me, I would miss hearing Masako Nozawa's voice every single episode, definitely. Um, and on top of that, it would it would sort of be that situation of you don't know what you have until it's gone, in a way. Where we wouldn't really have cared too much about what Goku had grown into because we were so annoyed by him at this certain point. And then with him being gone for say like if they want to be bold and do this for like 20 episodes or something that entire time span we really start to miss goku mm -hmm. again and i think that's a i think that'd be a really good step for dragon ball super to take in 2018 if they decide no, no, to. I, I completely agree with that i mean <laughs> bold is an understatement taking off goku for 20 episodes <laughs> that's an understatement. like i was talking about like, yeah like a month <laughs> like let's do a month yeah i mean more than likely yeah but if they wanted to go that route for like an entire like you know an entire arc that's a large arc without goku that would just whew, that would be I insane know, i know i mean like but i guess the one thing here like you said whether he's off training whether he gets erased by the Zinos reluctantly but he broke the rules so they have to kind of follow their own mentality despite the fact that they like him and he's caused them the most joy for this tournament uh there's also i, I don't really know how else you do it without having some repercussion that brings him back almost immediately but i i, I I don't know. I, I don't know like exactly how this would happen, but I agree with you. There's just something there that I think not only you and I, but I'm sure most of the people still listening to this 
would really like to see in Dragon Ball Super? Would it be a great way to change Dragon Ball Super and make us, like you said, appreciate Goku more, appreciate the other characters more, and just do what Dragon Ball Super has done best? It doesn't have to be these grand fights with space pirates or whatever whatever it actually ends up being. It just has to be, what would Gohan and Videl and Pan do this day? What would Vegeta and Trunks, Bra and Bulma do this day? You know, all this other stuff without Goku, you don't have to focus on the fighting. So we get a complete month of Goku being gone, training, maybe cutting, even if you cut back to him back and forth, kind of like the whole Saiyan arc thing. If he's not there, if he's not interacting with any of the main characters and he's just by himself, you give a chance to cut back to everyone else doing their own thing. I mean, I think Dragon Ball Super could have, and still can, with the Terminal Power, get, I guess, some kind of semblance of this by cutting back to Universe 7 and showing us what everyone's doing without Goku. Because those characters we still care about. We still care about Bulma, we still care about Goten and Trunks and, and Marin and Chi-Chi and all these other people. I know a lot of people don't care about Chi-Chi, but you guys get my point. Uh, so yeah, this is something I think would be really bold for Dragon Ball Super to do in 2018. I think that this would be a great way to start right after the Tournament of Power. A really bold statement saying that Dragon Ball Super is going to take some kind of a hiatus from Goku, at least for a couple weeks, and reassess, reevaluate until we get to our next main arc, where he's going to come back in big way, and people at that point, as you said, are going to be oh my gosh, like we miss Goku so much and we, we're, so, we're so happy to see him back. And we, we get to actually relish in that just for a couple of more weeks, you know, as we get more and more excited about the stuff that they're building up. But anyway, guys, like I said, please make sure to, uh, you know, come back every single day this week. We're going to be talking about ways in which Dragon Ball Super can reshape itself in 2018. It is a brand new year. We're hoping for some major shakeups with our the, the brand that we like, not just a show, but the entire extended universe of Dragon Ball, stuff that they can do to make us excited to keep watching the show, keep playing the games, keep buying and supporting the franchise that we love. But guys, I hope everyone enjoyed the video. Please make sure to go down to the description section below. Hit that link and go subscribe to Rocket Ride. Man, the guy makes some really awesome content. You're not going to want to miss any single minute of it. I hope everyone has a fantastic day, has a fantastic new year. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video out to all your friends because they're going to want to actually come in here and share their thoughts and opinions as well. We want to hear them. Don't forget to hit that bell over by the subscriber button. That's going to notify you every single time I upload. But with that being said, it's been real.